Hello guys, happy, happy Tuesday. As you know, it is September the 29th, 2020, and we are excited to be together in remote style today. Um, today is a Nash County Public Schools remote day, which means there is no time that we are using for our own. I'm so sorry, guys. I had to handle something on the office, but here we go. So it's Tuesday. Today's remote, which means Ms. Blaine's going to go over the lesson, but there's no Zoom this morning or this afternoon. So we are going to work through this together to see what happens. So let's get ready to go. So good morning and welcome and welcome and welcome. Some of you are watching this in the morning. Some of you are watching it in the afternoon because today you had a choice. So you might have even got to sleep in a little bit and you didn't have to get up and join Ms. Plan at 8.30. So I hope you enjoyed. Remember that when you're doing your remote days or when you're working offline and working on the videos, the biggest two are this one, which is to act like you're at school. Remember that you're at school. You want to do as much of the school part as you can. Remember that you need to listen Listening is always important. And you need to make sure that if you're eating that you're not away, that you are away from your computer keyboard. Keep those in mind. All right, so we started talking about feelings with Ms. Vester this week. And yesterday we decided we wanted to be able to identify some feelings and some experiences and things that give us those feelings. So we started yesterday with happy because we said happy was easy. It's easy to do happy. So today, Ms. Bland decided we would do the antonym of happy. And we know the antonym means the opposite. So the opposite of happy would be sad. So let's work on sad. So turn back to that first page in your notebook, and you should have the word happy still there, because we did happy yesterday. So let's look at sad. We're going to do our four of our W questions with the word sad. So for sad, we are going to need a who, a where, a when, and a what. So we're going to find a who, a where, a when, and a what. Make sure you get all four of those down. All right, so I'm gonna do mine and you gotta think about yours. So this is what we're gonna do, let's think. Who is someone that has made you sad? Where were you one time when you were sad? When have you been sad? And what is something that has made you sad? So Ms. Bland's gonna do hers, let's see. Who's the one that's made me sad? My brother has made me sad. Because when we were little, they used to just, I was the baby and the little one and they would go places and not take me because I was the girl and I was the youngest. And so sometimes that made me sad because they leave me at home. Where have I been sad? Hmm. I've been sad. I've been sad at home because I got left by my brothers. They all went somewhere. One time they went to a really cool trip and they left me at home because I was a girl. I did not like it at all because I thought I should have been able to go. They always went to basketball camp every year and they all went together and I didn't get to go. Didn't think it was fair. When have I been sad? Mm, I was sad. I was sad in August when school didn't start like it normally does. That made me sad. It was different. COVID had made everything different and that made me sad. And what's something that's made me sad? Oh my goodness, a sad movie. If I watch a movie that has something sad in it, I get super, super sad. So a sad movie will definitely make me sad. So a movie will make me sad. So pause here and think about things that you can add to your list of who, what, when, where for the word sad. 
Great, I hope you've added your words to your list. That's awesome. So today is day two. Day two, we're gonna continue to talk about feelings. We need to make sure that we understand that feelings are things we experience or something that we go through. And sometimes we have them at different times. We don't always all have the same feeling and we don't have them at the same time. But there's tons of feelings to be had. Today, Ms. Vester is sharing one of her favorite books. And that book today is Today I Feel Silly. And it says, after listening to the story, practice making feeling faces. So then once the book is over, I want you to find somebody in your house and I want you to make this face at them and then tell them what you're feeling. All right, let's see, click on the book. Oops. Click on this book, Ms. Blanche clicking on the wrong side. Today, I Feel Silly and Other Moods That Make My Day by Jamie Lee Curtis. This book is illustrated by Laura Cornell. Today, I feel silly. Mom says it's the heat. I put rouge on the cat and gloves on my feet. I ate noodles for breakfast and pancakes at night. I dressed like a star and was quite a sight. Today, my mood's bad. I feel grumpy and mean. I picked up my room and it still isn't clean. I forgot to feed Franny and water the fern and the cocoa I'm making is starting to burn. Today, I am angry. You better stay clear. My face, it's all pinched and red ear to ear. My friends had a play date. They left me out. My feelings are hurt. I want to shout. Oh, look at that face, guys. Today, I am joyful. My mood is first rate. My friend's sleeping over. She says she can't wait. My freckles are popping. The sun is so bright. I ran in the relay with all of my might. Today... I'm confused. My life's getting hairy. Sam says he's my boyfriend, but he also likes Mary. Oh, whoa. My mom told my father he might be a dad. I might get a brother. I'm not sure if I'm glad. Today, I am quiet. My mom understands. She gave me two ice creams. And then we held hands. We went to the movies and then had a bite. I cried just a little and then I felt all right. Today I'm excited. There's so much to do. I'm going to sell cookies and lemonade too. I'm starting a club to go clean up the park. And I've got a big crush on my new teacher named Mark. Today, I am cranky, so nothing seems right. I have diarrhea, and I broke my new kite. Oh, no. Mom dyed her hair orange. My dad shaved his beard. My tooth came in crooked. This family is so weird. Today, I am lonely. I feel so small. My auntie's away. I wish that she'd call. My mom's working late, and my dad has the flu. And although I've got stuff, I've got nothing to do. Today, I am happy I'm walking on air. I learned how to knit and to French braid my hair. I did my first solo in hip hop and jazz. This day's been so great, I am full of pizzazz. Today, I'm discouraged and frustrated. See, I tried rollerblading and fell on my knee. I really want straight hair, but mine's curly Q. Should I cut it or grow it? Oh, what should I do? 
Today, I am sad. My mood's heavy and gray. There's a frown on my face, and it's been there all day. My best friend and I had a really big fight. She said that I tattled, and I know that she's right. Today, my mood's great. It's the absolute best. I rode a two-wheeler, and I passed my math test. I played soccer at recess, and we won the game. I sang in the show, and parents, they both came. I'd rather feel silly, excited, or glad than cranky or grumpy, discouraged, or sad. But moods are just something that happen each day. Whatever I'm feeling inside is okay. How do you feel today? I hope that you enjoy Today I Feel Silly and Other Moods That Make My Day by Jamie Lee Curtis. All right, so we have lots of moods. So remember your assignment is you gotta go around and make a silly face, an angry face, a sad face, a cranky face, an excited face, and a happy face for somebody near you. Have fun. Today we have the blue page. The blue page for you is really blue. <clears throat> for me, it's still white, but it's the same page. Here you can find the things you need for this week. Remember spelling and vocabulary are always there. There's not a fluency passage. There's not a fluency passage for this week because Ms. Bland is doing something called a cold read. And a cold read simply means that you are gonna read it cold. It will be the first time that you've ever read that passage. And so Ms. Bland needs you to read it then. So no reading like the robot, tons of expression, and make sure you're ready for it to be live on Wednesday. Of course, you'll have all week to finish it, but Wednesday will be the first day that it'll show, it'll show up. Letterland, you have 12 Letterland words that you were working on this week. And remember, Ms. Bland told you that we're dealing with that soft G sound that says J. Let's look. Ms. Bland can't get through the numbers. Science is a Blast with Generation Genius, a new teaching resource of science videos and lessons for grades 8 and 8. It inspires students and saves teachers time. Get all our ready-to-go lessons, videos, activities, and more at generationgenius.com. Large, 
large A J Stage Stage So G Sounds like J This is how How we say it So G Sounds like J This is how so that's called G makes the just sound. So make sure you are listening for that sound and the words that have it this week. Those words, of course, are age, huge, edge, fudge, badge, page, dodge, and bridge. The second sound we're focusing on this week is the long U. And you hear long U in the words cube, use, excuse. And our outlaw word for the week is include. It's just kind of different. Make sure you're studying all 12 of your letter land words for the week. Remember today's assignment and seesaw for letter land is ABC order. You will be putting each of your letter land words into ABC order. It's reading time. Reading time is always so much fun. You know, we're skipping around a little bit in our book. So make sure you meet me on page 146, 146. We're skipping over a little bit. So moms and dads, we are not going in exact order. So have them meet me on page 146. That would be great. When they get to 146, when they get to page 146, make sure that they are there and ready to go. We have a new, we're in unit two, week four, and then our essential question says, how are offsprings like their parents? Yesterday, we talked about how we were going to talk about mamas and babies and daddies and babies and how they're alike and how they're different. We're going to compare and contrast how these parents and their babies are different. You are different from your parents, but then you're so much like them. When you were born, they looked at your nose and your ears and your eyes and all those things, and they decided what you look like. Then sometimes they waited to see how you were going to act because maybe you act like one parent, look like another. So it's all kinds of things. You can look like grandma and granddaddy. You can look like even your cousins. My cousin and I look very much alike and we're cousins. And people think we're sisters. So it all depends on your family. So we're gonna talk about animal families and how they look because they show similarities and differences too. In your packet, if you will, turn to our page. <clears throat> excuse me, it looks like this one. We're going to work through this page together. And then you have questions that you will, of course, do on your own. So let's start by looking at our vocabulary words. We have vocabulary words for this week. And they are eight words that I think are pretty easy for you to learn this week because they're fairly simple words. Adult. Alive, covered, fur, sorry. Giant, groom, mammal, offspring. Those are your eight words for this week. Make sure that you study all eight words. So let's get started. Here we go. Genre, expository text, eagles and eaglets. Remember we talked about expository text means that from our story, we're gonna learn something. There's a lesson to be learned, that, but it's not just any kind of lesson. It's informational. We are learning something that's going to inform us. It's gonna make our brain muscles larger. We are learning something from what we're reading. So we're excited about learning something. We know that when it's expository text, there's usually going to be photographs and there's going to be those text features on our photographs, which means there's going to be some captions under the pictures. There's going to be some headings at the top of the pages. There's going to be things in our story that help us understand the story. So let's get started with what we see. Let's review our essential question. Essential question. How are offspring like their parents? Read to learn how young bald eagles are like their parents. Here we go. Bald 
eagles are birds. The baby birds or offspring are called eaglets. Let's read about how eaglets are like their parents. It's nesting time. All birds lay eggs. Bald eagles build their nests in the tops of trees so the eggs will be safe. Their nests are built of sticks and grass. They add on to their nests each year. They can become huge. These giant nests can be as large as nine feet across. That's bigger than your bed. The mother eagle lays from one to three eggs. She sits on her eggs until they hatch. Then both parents watch over the nest. All right, next page. Turn your page with me. Proud parents. At first, the eaglets are helpless. They cannot walk. They need their parents for food. They also cannot see well. Birds are not mammals. They do not have milk to feed their young. They hunt for food. Eaglets also need their parents for safety. Eaglets grow up. Bald eagles use their sharp eyes to hunt. They use their strong wings to fly fast. They also use their claws and beak to catch fish. Young eaglets must learn all these things. Then they can live on their own. The eagles must bring food to the eaglets. Finger on your words, top of page 153. Unlike mammals, birds have feathers, not fur. An eaglet is born covered with soft gray down. It cannot fly until it grows dark feathers like its parents. The eaglet stays near the nest until its wings grow strong. That takes about five months. Diagram, bald eagle. Diagram labels, powerful eyes. Dark feathers on body and wings. Hooked yellow beak. White tail feathers. Long claws. An eaglet becomes an adult when it has learned to do all the things its parents do. This takes about five years. Bald eagles can stay alive for up to 30 years. The bald eagle soars, the feathers on its huge wings spread out like fingers. Bald eagles soar. Once it learns to fly, the bald eagle can soar for hours. The bald eagle must take good care of its feathers. It uses its beak to groom itself. It must keep its feathers clean. Can you believe this powerful eagle began life as a helpless baby? So can you believe that big eagle is turning into th that little baby eagle is turning into this giant eagle. That's crazy. So here we go. Open up that packet to that page Ms. Bland just showed you. And let's see if we can do what it says. Because at the top of that page, it asks us for text evidence. So let's see if we can find some. Go back to the beginning of your story. And let's look. It says, good readers use text evidence to help them find answers. And that's what we're going to do. The first question says, read the heading on page 151. I'm on 151, and here's my heading. My heading says, it's nesting time. I just put a box around the heading. There's the heading. What do you think this section will be about? Well, the title of it is the nesting time. So just from looking at the fact that it says the nesting time and we read this paragraph, what did we find out that this section was about? If you said the bird's nest, you are correct. 
this section is about the bird's nest. It's about that eagle's nest. It's about the eagle's nest. And we got a chance to use our apostrophe S to show possession. So yes, definitely is the eagle's nest. I hope that's the answer you chose as well. Number two, why are the eaglets helpless? Hmm, why are they helpless? So we need to read. When we're doing a text evidence, it's always good to find a keyword. So in the question, the keyword was helpless. I have found the word helpless. Ms. Blanca, click on her P and well, there we go. I found the word helpless. So it says, why are the eaglets helpless? At first, the eaglets are helpless. They cannot walk. They need their parents for food. They also cannot see well. Oh my goodness. So there's several things that make them helpless. You need to choose two of them to go on the line. So there were several answers. We're on number two. Why are the eaglets helpless? You need to choose two. I see several. I see because they cannot walk. That's one. I see because they need their parents for food. That's two. And they cannot see well. That's three. Choose two of those answers to go on your paper. The next question talks about the eagle's claws. So we, rock, we read down and we find that the eagle's claws, I found my word claws, always finding those key words. They also use their claws and break and beak, excuse me, to catch fish. So what do eagles use their claws for? They can use them to catch fish. Text evidence, great answer. Be sure you include it on your paper. The next question says, what must the eaglets learn to do? Oh, it's something real important they have to learn to do. And it's at the bottom of page 152. Put your finger on what you think they must learn to do. I hope your finger's on the sentence that says they must learn to live on their own. They must learn to live on their own. That was the very last sentence they must learn to. They must learn to live on their own. They're not going to live with mom and daddy forever. They must learn to live on their own. That's very important that they learn how to live on their own. The next question says, how long do eagles live? Well, we need to find out how long do eagles live? It's on page 154. See if you can find how long eels stay alive. Write that answer on your paper. Be sure to put the number or the number word and the word years. The next question says, look at the caption on 154. What do you learn from the eagle's feathers? So here's the caption. This is the caption it's talking about. What did we learn about the feathers from this caption? It says, when the bald eagle soars, the feathers on its huge wings spread out like fingers. Oh, I think that's something I learned about his feathers that I might not have known, that his feathers spread out, that those wings on his feathers spread out like fingers. So they spread out like fingers. That's a great answer. I'd make sure that I get that down. And my last question says, what does that good old eagle use to groom himself? Here's the word groom. See if you can find the answer for what he uses and write it on the line. Pause. 
Pause here if you need to get down your answers. Remember that you should have found your own answer for how long do they live. You needed the number or the number word and then the word years. If you want to write the number, you can, or you can use the number word that's in the story. For the last one, remember you need to tell me what he uses to groom himself. Pause here if you need to copy this down. Welcome back. If you're back, that means you've copied down everything you needed for the front. On the back is your you do. These are the questions that you're gonna do on your own. You're gonna use your text to find the answers that are missing from this side. This is responding to reading. That means you're gonna think about what you read. And these answers don't always come straight from the story. These answers sometimes come from your mind. So you're taking what you've read and now you're going to respond to it. You're gonna talk about what it means. So eagles must learn how to use their claws to do what? Look back in the story and then tell me. You're going to be telling me, not going to your book and always underlining an answer, but you're gonna use the book to help you find an answer. What do they use their beaks to do? What do they grow feathers? They can do what? What else must they grow? So this is a good chance to really think about what the story told you about the eagle. Good luck and do your best. You may pause here to do it, or you may continue and finish it on the end. The choice is yours. Our grammar skill for this week deals with multiple meaning words. It means words that mean more than one thing. We talked about like the word fly. Fly was one we talked about yes, um, yesterday. We talked about, it could be a bug, that little worsen bug that Sophia said gets in your food when you try to eat at a cookout. Or we can be talking about fly, we got two birds that are flying in the sky. Here are several examples. Take a few minutes to look at them. For instance, we have saw. We have a saw that you use and you saw it with your eyes. We talk about a date. When you guys get in high school, you're gonna take and go out on a date. And when you go on a date, that's the date. That's the little people in the picture. But we also say today's date is, and we know. We talk about ring and fan and ship and turn. All these are words we did watch yesterday. We've seen all of these words mean more than one thing, but they're spelled the exact same way. We use the context clues of the sentence to understand which one it means. If I say I'm going to fly to Disney World, you know I'm not talking about the fly with the big eyes that gets in your food at the cookout. So you have to look at what the sentence is telling you to sometimes make your decision. Hey friends, today's lesson is all about multiple meaning words. So I was reading this book and I got a little confused. Let me show you what happened. On the first page, I read this. The princess went to the ball. Ooh, and I thought about Cinderella, one of my favorite stories of all time. And in that, the princess goes to a ball. And I know that that means the princess went to a dance. Because you can say ball is like a way to talk about a dance. Then a few pages later, I was reading about another character, and it said this, he kicked the ball. Now, wait a minute, he didn't kick a dance. What did he kick, friend? Oh yeah, a ball, like a soccer ball. Okay, now wait a minute. What do you notice about these two sentences? Yeah, they both have the same word in them, ball. See how it's in pink? But in each sentence, does the word ball mean the same thing? No. For the princess, she went to a dance. It's called a ball. And for the little boy, he kicked the ball, like a soccer ball. So even though the word looks the same, B-A-L-L, -L, they have different meanings. So that's going to help us out with our lesson today because our learning goal says, I can identify words with multiple meanings. Multiple just means more than one. So there are words that look the same, but they can mean different things. In this lesson, I'm gonna show you some different examples. For example, do you like to fish? Yeah, do you like to go fishing? Well, I don't really like to go fishing, but I have some friends who can sit on a boat and fish all day long. Now, in this, 
sentence, do you like to fish? It means, do you like to get out a fishing pole and some bait and go somewhere, maybe to like a lake? And put your pole in and try to catch some fish. Do you agree? Look at this sentence. Fish is a multiple meaning word. I got a new pet fish. Oh, I got a new pet Goldie. In this sentence, I got a new pet fish. Fish is talking about the animal. See how fish is a multiple meaning word? That means it means more than one thing. Now, friends, how do I know which fish I'm talking about? Yeah, I have to think about the words in the rest of the sentence. Do you like to fish? Well, I don't like to pet. I don't like to animal. That doesn't make any sense. I can't even talk about the animal at that point. I got a new pet fish. I got a new pet going out to the lake. No, that doesn't make any sense. You got to think about the words around the multiple meaning words in the sentence. So we do. We have to think about the words that are around multiple meaning words so that we can help them make sense to us as we go through our lesson. You have an activity in Seesaw today that's going to deal with some multi-meaning words and you're going to have a sentence and two pictures. You need to decide which one you think matches what that sentence is talking about. Be careful. Take your time and read the sentences very carefully. We've got some more examples. Look at bat and bat, fly, foot, date, note, fall, and rain. For instance, we're in the season of fall right now, but we are also, you can go outside and you can fall. So that's definitely two multiple meaning words. This one has four meanings for the word bill. A duck has a bill on the front of his mouth. There was a boy named Bill right here. This is an idea that could turn into a law. It's a bill. And then paper money is a dollar bill. So multiple meaning word and all of them are spelled the same way. The only difference for his name, it should be a capital B, but we already knew that. If you need a break, you may take one real quick. Make sure that you come on back so you can get your lesson done. If you don't need your break, stay right where you are because Ms. Blaine is gonna keep going. If you need a break, press, press pause here. All right, welcome back guys. It's time for math. For math today, we're just gonna do a little bit of review and we're just gonna make sure that everybody is okay for what they need to know about math. But we're gonna start off with the sprint. Today, Ms. Bland's gonna do something a little different. So make sure you're listening and ready to go. Normally, Ms. Bland gives you one minute to do your sprint. And I'm gonna give you that same one minute. So I want you to get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Put down anything else you're looking at. If you're looking at TV, turn away from it because you need to be focused, focused, focused. And I'm going to give you one minute to take this. Put your hands on your head. Don't touch anything. Do not start until Miss Bland is ready. You got to wait for me. You got to wait for me. You got to wait for me. So don't start anything, just wait. Ms. Blaine just lost her timer. Oh my goodness. All right, let's see back up a little. Let me back her up. All right, so we're gonna have one minute. In that one minute, you're going to answer as many of these math questions as you can. Remember that they are subtraction, you are taking away. Do the best that you can. Do not just sit. If you don't know the answer, skip it and go to one that you may know the answer to. When the timer goes off, please stop. Do not cheat and keep going. On your mark, get set, go. Twenty seconds left. And 
Stop! Stop, stop, stop. Hands on your head. Hands on your head. Hands on your head. Good job. I hope you did well. Make sure you let mom or dad see this paper so they can add up how many you got wrong or right, and they can tell me the number that you got right up at the top on that very first line. Moms and dads, if you could look back at the one from Monday and tell me if there is an improvement, if there's more or less um, completed or answered correctly, either or, and just kind of note that for me up at the top, that would be awesome. Thank you so much for your help with that. All right, guys, let's talk a little bit about place value. You know that we are still in module three, which deals with place value. We are still working with place value and being able to understand those numbers. We're in module three and we're still in lesson three and we are talking about place value. Yesterday when we did our place value lesson, we went over the three kinds of ways that we've been working with place value. We've talked about adding on to a number. We've talked about counting to find the value and we wanted to make sure that we were comfortable with both. So today, Ms. Bland wants to review with you very quickly what we did on yesterday. So let's look at yesterday first. So no pencils are needed. Don't write anything down. In your notebook, you should already have this, so you shouldn't have to write anything right now. So first, we talked about being able to add on. So we talked about having a number and being able to add on to that number in order to get to a bigger number. Today, the only difference is we like to talk about it and talk about it. We want to have a math talk. We want to be able to say, hey, when I went from 65 to 94, I used tens and ones. There was no way I could use 100 to add up from 65 to 94. When I went from 123 to 225, I used tens and ones. But when I went from 413 to 721, I used hundreds and ones. So there's a difference in what I use based upon what I'm doing different. So that matters and that makes a difference. So that's always important. That's where we are with this work, being able to tell the difference between what we need and being able to show that number. So we worked with that yesterday. We also worked with being able to add the value no matter the order. You're going to see some of these in your Seesaw activity today. So when you're in Seesaw, be careful that you show these, that you write in your expanded form, and that you tell me what the value adds up to be. The third way was to be able to count, and you guys have done very well with being able to count. So I'm always excited that you can do that. But today's lesson in Seesaw will focus mainly on this part, which is showing me the value using the expanded form, and it will show me how to add up from my number. That's what you will focus on in Seesaw today. So let's get down two quick examples to make sure you're ready. So the first one, let's talk about going up. Let's use one of those big numbers that you're gonna see. So let's do 254 and let's go up to 665. So the first thing I need is my 254. 100. Remember that your blocks should be so much better than Ms. Bland. She's using a mouse and you have that nice pencil and a steady place to use. So yours will look better than mine. I'm over here doing the best I can. So there's my number. I box it off because that's my starting point. It's like the starting line. Now I have 200, 210, 20, 230, 240, 250, 252. Oh, Ms. Bland left off two ones. Sorry about that. And there's my two ones. Now, I've got to get to 665. Well, I'm at 200, so let's see. 254, 354, 454, 554, 654, 654, 664, 665. I used ones, tens, and hundreds to find my answer. I used ones, tens, and hundreds to find my answer. It needed all three. Now let's look at an example when I'm trying to find my value. I want to find my value.
First, I need my hundreds. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. I have 500s. Then I have my tens, 10, 20, 30, 40. There's my hundreds, there's my tens, and then my ones. I have 500 plus 40 plus three. The total value of my picture in place value form in number form would be 543. Make sure you have this down in your notes. Great job. So let's look at what you have to do in your packet. The first page of your packet looks like this one. Let's talk about showing what we know. My suggestion to you would be in your notebook if you needed to, you could do these three problems to see what you use to find your answer. So Ms. Bland figures some of you can think through it with me and so we'll start there. Let's start with the easiest one first. From 300 to 900, if both my numbers end in zeros, I know that I'm only going to have to use, shout it out. If you said hundreds, you're exactly right. I just have to use hundreds. Draw a line to match. My next number is 97 to 300. If I'm going from 97 to 300, think about what Ms. Bland told you about getting to a number with zeros. So if I'm at 97, 98, 99, 100, I would only have to use three ones and then I would be at 100. And then I could go from 100 to 300 pretty easy. So the only two units I would need would be ones and you said hundreds, you are rocking today. It would be hundreds, very good. Oh, but look at my next one, 484 to 1000. That's a pretty big jump. So Ms. Bland thinks we're probably gonna need them all. So which answer would that one be? You said ones, tens, and hundreds, you're exactly correct. Very good. And that of course makes my last one pretty simple to figure out, but let's look at why. 743 to 800, it's very close. I'm at 43, 53, 63, 73, 83, 93, and some ones, I'm at 800. So that would be the simplest choice. So that one would go here. Now, let's look at what we have on the next question. It says, these are bundles of hundreds, tens, and ones. Draw to show how you would count to a thousand. Oh my goodness, not a thousand. So we're here with 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 910, 911. So we're right now at 911, and you're gonna go from 911 to 1,000. Show me what you think God you would do. Pause here to do it. All right, if you're back, that means you paused and you figured out how you would get from 911 to 1,000. So Ms. Bland says if we're at 911, I wanna get to a number that ends in a zero. So 911, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 920, 930, 940, 950, 960, 970, 980, 990, 1000. So you should have added 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 ones, as well as, I got a little smaller, so it'll fit. As well as 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. What's 80? It's eight tens. That's what I would need to add to show. So this is what you need to make sure you have because my direction said to draw it. So you make sure that you draw it. Pause here to make sure you have each part of this complete. 
All right, the second part that you need to finish simply says Sally bundled her sticks into hundreds, tens, and ones. How many does she have? We know how to do this. Remember, these are my hundreds. Remember, as they get smaller, these are my tens. And then when they get really small, these are my ones. Can't even go to the top. So, how many sticks does she have? Give me a total number on this line. But don't forget part B. Part B says draw three more hundreds and three more tens. So go up here and give me three more hundreds and three more tens and tell me what her new number would be and put a circle around it. What would the new total value be? Pause here to complete. Good job, guys. Remember that in Seesaw, you do have a math activity that is very much like the ones we just reviewed. Please be sure that you complete those. Sound, sound used as communication. Yes, when we talk about communication and we talk about sound, we do wanna talk about the ways that people communicate. So you have this passage. I ask that you read the passage for science today and answer those five questions. Some of you, I think it would be awesome if you would take your highlighter and find your answers with your highlighter. What's that mean, Ms. Bland? It's called finding text evidence. And yes, it even works in science. So you have highlighters. Ms. Bland sent home a brand new highlighter with everyone. If for some reason you have no idea where that highlighter now is, you may use a yellow crayon. We use bells or alarms to communicate what? So we're looking, we start reading, we read the first paragraph. We use our voices to communicate with other people. We use musical instruments to create pleasing sounds for entertainment or special occasions. We use bells or alarm systems like fire alarms or ambulance sirens to communicate emergencies or for warnings. We use buzzers like signals at school or at home to tell us when it's time to do something. So what do we use bells and alarm systems for? To communicate emergencies. So you take your highlighter, you would find that sentence, you would highlight that sentence, and then we're going to put on the line that we would use them to communicate emergencies. And we found that answer in our text. We didn't guess about it, we didn't know what happened, it's right there. Use the rest of your passage in your highlighter to answer questions numbers two, three, four, and five. Please do your very, very best. So it's your time to show what you know. Go through and answer everything that you may have skipped or missed over. Make sure that you don't forget your science because that is important for today as well. Great job today. I appreciate you guys being amazing and watching this video and getting your work done on your own. For virtual, as we slowly get there, we have spelling, math, and you will have just spelling and math, I believe. Spelling, math. Just spelling and math for today. We don't have a story activity, sorry. Just spelling and math. So you have short for virtual um, as far as Seesaw goes. Remember to stop by the Bailey site and catch up on your activities with Mr. D and Ms. Reason if you have not. Moms and dads, if you need a paper copy of those because working through the Weebly site is not working for you, you need to let me know and I'll be more than happy to get one for you. Remember for your attendance, you're watching this video. Ms. Bland needs your attendance. There are ways to let Ms. Bland know you've watched the video. Moms, dads, and kids hear me well. You can send Ms. Bland a text to Dojo and say, we watched our video today. Ms. Bland's got you because I'm going to respond back. That's called two-way communication. Second way is that you can send me a picture of something you worked on. That's another way to make it happen. Doing one of your Seesaw activities is another way for me to know that you were a participant in class today. Pick one of those three ways, but make sure you pick one, because if you don't pick one of those, I do have to mark you absent until it's caught up. So make sure you choose one of those ways to communicate that you are a part of today's assignment. You are such smart cookies, and I love being your teacher, and I'm so excited about the progress that we're making together. So virtual is not always easy, but at least we make the best of it. And that's all we can do. So we've got to learn to adjust and be flexible. And that's exactly what we're doing in our second grade work. So thank you for being amazing. Remember to finish your packet work. Remember to go online and finish anything that is for you in Seesaw. I do know what it was I was forgetting. It's vocabulary. There's a vocabulary activity, ABC order, vocabulary, and math. Oh, and multiple meaning. I forgot. 
There are four. There are four activities. I'm sorry. So you got tons of work to do, but you don't have Zoom this afternoon and you'll have plenty of time to do it. We will not Zoom on Wednesday afternoon either. So if you get burdened down today, you can push some of it to tomorrow to make sure that you finish it all. Any tests from last week that weren't finished need to be done before Wednesday. Wednesday, those tests will come down. So make sure those are finished as well. If Ms. Bland can do anything for you, just let me know and I'll be happy to help in any way that I can. I hope that you have a fabulous rest of the day, whether you chose this video early in the morning or if you chose to do this video right before bed. You are amazing and I hope your day shows it. Have a great one.